Hi, this is Stan Lyle, and you're about to see Master Math's lesson on the distributive property. During the lesson, you'll, you'll come to some You Try It pages. When you get there, hit your pause button, pull out some paper and a pencil, do the problems, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. The distributive property is used in algebra and in math, uh, and distribution is a word that you're probably familiar with. A postman distributes the mail to the houses in your neighborhood. A school bus distributes you and your friends back to your neighborhood after school. When you play a game of cards, the dealer distributes the cards evenly to all the players. In algebra, we also distribute. The distributive property says that if a number or variable, A, is multiplied times a bracketed set of numbers and operands, we can distribute A to the numbers and variables evenly around each operand. For instance, in the expression A times bracket B plus C, I can simplify that by multiplying the A times each of the variables inside the brackets and around the operand. So A times parentheses B plus C equals A times B plus A times C. Does that make sense to you? Well, let's try it with some real numbers. Let's say we got the expression 3 times parentheses 2 plus 1. Well, we know in simple math that I can add the 2 plus 1 and it becomes 3 so I could change this to 3 times 3, which is the same thing as 2 plus 1. And 3 times 3 equals 9. Well, let's try it with the distributive property. I've got 3 times 2 plus 1. And the distributive property says I can multiply the 3 times both of the numbers around the operant within the brackets. And I won't change anything. So I've got 3 times 2 plus 3 times 1, and that equals 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 3 times 1, which is 3. 6 plus 3 equals 9. First way we did it, we got 9. Second way we did it, we got 9. It must work. The distributive property works in both directions. You can also undistribute. We know that 10 plus 5 equals 15. Well, let's rewrite that and undistribute it and find out if we get the same answer. Let's rewrite 10. 10 can be rewritten as 2 times 5. 2 times 5 equals 10. And then let's carry down our plus sign. And then let's rewrite the 5. 5 can be rewritten as 1 times 5. Now I've got 2 times 5 plus 1 times 5. And i got a 5 on both si in both brackets. So I can take that out. I can change that to 5 times 2 plus 1. 5 times 2 plus 1. 1. Now, 5 times 2 plus 1, I can rewrite 2 plus 1 as 3, and then I know that 5 times 3 equals 15. Here's a trick you can use the rest of your life. Mental math is really helpful because lots of times you don't have a calculator and problems can be a little harder than you can do in your head easily. So the distributive property can be used to make the mental math a lot easier. Let's say we got a problem 50 times 12. Well, 50 times 12 is a little hard to multiply in your head. Maybe some of you can do it, but um, and it's, it's kind of hard. But we can rewrite that expression. 50 times 12 equals 50 times 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 equals 12. Now it's a lot easier. We've got 50 times 10, 
which we know is 500. And then we got 50 times 2, which we know is 100. So 50 times 10 plus 2 equals 500 plus 100, or 600. Now you try it. 4 times the expression 2 plus 3. Hit your pause key, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to advance to the answer. Four times the expression two plus three. Well, the distributive property says that we can multiply the four times both the two and the three and put a plus sign between them and we won't have changed the answer. So, let's do that. I got four times two, four times two. I move the plus sign forward and then I do four times three, four times three. Now, 4 times 2 equals 8, 4 times 3 equals 12, carry the plus sign forward, I got 8 plus 12 equals 20. Well, let's try it the other way, just adding the expression or solving the, uh, uh, the part that's in the parentheses and see if we get the same answer. So I got 4 times the expression 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5, 4 times 5 equals 20, same answer I got before, it worked. 10 times 12. Hit the pause key, do the problem, and then hit the forward key. 10. Were you able to do it in your head? I hope so. 10 times 12 equals 10 times the expression 10 plus 2. Well, now we got to multiply the 10 times both of the numbers within the expression, the 10 and then the 2, and add those two results together. So 10 times 10 equals 100, and 10 times 2 equals 20. 100 plus 20 equals 120. Here's a side note that every one of you should know, and every one of you should use this just about every day. When you multiply a number by 10, you simply add a zero to that first number. If I'm multiplying 15 times 10, the answer is going to be 15 with one zero after it, or 150. If I'm going to multiply 236 times 10, then the answer is going to be 236 with one zero after it, or 2,360. If I multiply 18 times 100, I've got an 18, and then I've got two zeros that I carry forward after the 18, and my answer is 1800. Now here's one for you to try on your own. Plot a piece of paper and a pencil and undistribute 15 plus 5. I can rewrite 15 plus 5. The 15 can be rewritten as 3 times 5 because 3 times 5 equals 15. The 5 can be rewritten as 1 times 5 because 1 times 5 equals 5. Now I've got a 5 inside both of the brackets and I can pull that out and multiply 5 times the expression 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1. Rewrite this expression by undistributing. 3x plus 9. Well, don't get worried. I know that looks a little confusing. Some of you haven't used variables too much, so let me explain. 3x plus 9. The x is referred to as a variable. A variable is a symbol used in algebra to represent an unknown quantity. It's an unknown number. x 
y, z, a, or any other letter can be used as a variable. So one way to read this would be 3x plus 9 or 3 times some unknown number plus 9. All right, now I think you can do it. 3x plus 9, undistributed. Hit the pause button, do the problem, hit the forward key. Three x plus nine. We can write rewrite that as three times x plus three times three, because three times three x is the same thing as three times x, and three times three equals nine. Now I've got a three in both bracketed expressions, which I can pull out and change it to three times what's left in the brackets after I pull the threes out. I've got an X out, and I got a plus sign, and I got a three left. So three X plus nine is equivalent to three times the expression X plus three. This one's a little tough, but read it, see you, see, see it, at least focus on the numbers and what the real question is. List what you know. You know, for instance, that your mother's age, we're going to call M, and you know that your age is 11. List what you know, and then try to convert it into a mathematical expression. All right, all right, all right. I know you're all complaining that this problem was too hard. But you need to learn to solve these problems and not get scared of them. And one of the techniques that will help you do that is called CUCC. Circle, underline, count, and check. What that means is when you get a word problem like this, first of all, it's pretty certain that if there's numbers in this word problem, they're going to be part of the solution because this is a math question and we deal with numbers. So, let's read the question. You are 11 years old. 11, there's a number. Let's circle it. Your sister is X years older. Oops, X. That's a variable which represents a number. It must need to be circled. Your mother is three times older than your sister. There's another number. Let's circle it. Write and simplify an expression that represents your mother's age and years. Well, there's the question. That's what we're supposed to do, so let's underline it. Now, let's figure out what we know. Let's simplify what we know and translate it into math. All right, in the red box on the left, I've written down what we know. First of all, it told us that we want to find out your mother's age in years, and we're going to call that M. So M equals your mother's age. M equals your mother's age. All right, what else do we know? We know that you're 11 years old. 11 equals your age. What else do we know? We know that your sister is X years older than you. 11, your age, plus X, equals your sister's age. So, now we know a bit. We know that M equals your mother's age. 11 is your age. 11 plus X is your sister's age. And it says in this question that your mother is three times older than your sister. So, that's what we need to translate into math. And here's how we do it. Your mother... Her age equals is three times greater than your sister's age. Your sister is 11 plus X. So your mother is three times 11 plus X. Now I can simplify that using the distributive property because I can multiply the 3 times the 11 and get 33 and then carry down my plus sign and then multiply the 3 times x and get 3x. So your mother is 33 years old plus 3 times the difference between your age and your sister's age. Well, I hope you learned a lot about the distributive property, and now it's time to test your skills. Go to mastermath.info 
and find the worksheet page. On the worksheet page, under sixth grade first quarter, you'll see a worksheet labeled the distributive property. Download and print that worksheet and try to answer the questions. If you have trouble answering the questions, you can always come back and listen to this lesson again. And we hope you come back and listen to other lessons in the future. See you later.